circuit board board hi guys this is uh, part three of the uh, core rom hardware progress uh, demos and uh, this is the original 5 5 timer i had in the first video with a few changes to the resistor cap capacitor combination there um, i've added a few fixed resistors over the pot and a higher value capacitor to make the led flash slower uh, so a human can see it and it's got a fairly good range now for a, a person to look at um, can go quite slow and quite fast uh, for, for a human uh, but all can be seen uh, with the naked eye over here is a 4017 decade counter uh, with its second output tied to its reset line so it works it might as well be a flip-flop now this board and it's receiving its clock signal from the 555 output um, so now that it's being a flip-flop its output LED will toggle for every clock cycle of the 555 there we go you should be able to see there that it toggles the orange LED so the purpose of that is uh, to test a chain of decade counters that I've made for the, the larger core ROM board. Um, we can input the signal from the 555 as a clock signal and the signal from the decade counter as the data signal and should get alternating bits without the need uh, to use a microcontroller. It turns out I only have half the shift register logic to populate the board, but uh, it can be tested half at a time. So the oscillator flip-flop test jig has uh, been set up to provide power to the logic board, a clock, a data signal, and the reset is held high, the reset for the logic chips. Knowing Texas Instruments shift registers, I think that when they're powered up, all the bits will be set, so it'll take 32 cycles to flush uh, what's in the shift registers out before we see any LED flashing, so here it goes. Ah, as I predicted. Could speed that up with the pot, but... I'll let it go. I'm reluctant to touch the thing. There we go. Now I've got alternating ones and that proves that that side of the logic board is fine. I don't have to touch anything in the center of the chips. The good thing is that all the wiring for the, the core addressing is on the outside of the board on both sides because uh, the orientation of the shift registers. So I'm happy with that. I'll try the other side. Okay, for the other side I'd like to provide an LED this time because it was set up to uh, test a whole chain of shift registers uh, but now we're sending the bits I think I'll allow them to go through I've got to hold an LED on a data pin Hopefully you can see that. Oh. Yeah, it's working. I hope you can see it reflecting off my finger. But yeah, I can adjust the frequency of the bits. Okay, so that's great. This is the all new and updated uh, core ROM board with uh, 16 ferrites, larger grommets, two channels. So I'm not going to uh, make a 16-bit um, memory. It'd be or 16-bit wide memory. It wouldn't be as, as useful to me as bytes anyway. Uh, most of my arrays are bytes, but I am going to make a two-channel 8-bit um, board. So um, it should be interesting and, and maybe neater. Another cool feature about the oscillator flip-flop test jig is that it's no longer required. 